It's got to be said that there are a few times in history when someone has failed as monumentally hard as when Sargon joined UKIP. I mean, he destroyed, literally destroyed the very party he was meant to be supporting. Now, you scroll a clock back when they were first joining UKIP and they were making a political statement. They were going to throw their YouTube celebrity behind a political party. And they were so happy that their, their, their advocacy was promoting UKIP. And they were all in it together. What could possibly go wrong? They were being taken seriously by real political figures. Yeah. This isn't going to end well. You might think that when Brianna Wu, that was when one of these Gamergate uh, victims, ran for office, this was the sort of thing that pure comedy was made from. But you're wrong. Because, I mean, even she managed to get about 20% uh, of the vote, and that was starting from nothing. What percent of the vote did Sargon get? 3%. And that wasn't 3% starting from nothing. That was 3% starting from 30%. They managed to reduce the vote of UKIP by 90%. I mean, this, this is even decimation. This is annihilation. Leading to the rather obvious meme that whatever Sargon touches, Sargon kills. Now, you might say that you can't just lay the death of UKIP solely at Sargon's feet. <laughs> but you're wrong. Yes, you can. And I'll explain why. Now, the overwhelming reason why UKIP got wiped out is because Nigel Farage gave Brexit voters an alternative place to put their protest vote. Now, you've got to understand something about the EU elections in the UK. No one really cares about them. Typically, only about 30% of the people turn up to vote. And so, with such a small turnout, if you've got a, a, a highly motivated group of people, even if they're relatively minor, they can really clean up. And so, historically, the EU elections, very small parties have done well out of protest votes because that's what people do in these elections. It's a place where people think they can safely vote for some protest party as a way of punishing the party in power. Now, people have reminded me of just how awesome my graphic skills are. So this time, I've decided when we're going for bell curves, I'll go for real bell curves. So that's actually the mathematical formula for a, a Gaussian, it's a bell-shaped curve. And that's going to be all of the electorate in the UK, going from the most Brexit here to the least Brexit here. Okay, and it's about 50 well, odd million people on the electoral roll in England. So, if we were to take a look at the referendum, turns out only about 70% of the people voted in the referendum. So one third didn't vote, and I'm going to spread them evenly across the range. So there you go. Some, the, the area of this curve is only 70% of the area of this curve. So that's now all of the people who voted in the Brexit referendum. Now, of course, of those, about... 50%, actually 52%, as so you'll see here, actually voted for Brexit. So roughly it was split three ways. 30% didn't care enough to vote, 30% voted out, 30% voted in. Right Now, let's take a look at the number of people who actually voted uh, in the EU elections for the Brexit party. And that's it. It's about... 30% uh, of the vote of 30% of the people who actually, uh, of the entire population, it's about 10%. That's this great victory for the Brexit party. Or if you prefer, you can actually have that as a sort of little Gaussian. So, you know, if you were to sort of say the, the, the blue line here is, oh, I won't do that. If you say the blue line, if the blue uh, curve here is all of the voters in the UK, that's this massive vote for the Brexit party. So if you, know, you want the numbers on that, there are about 50 million people who can vote in the UK. And of those, uh, only, only about 5 million voted for uh, the Brexit party in the latest EU elections. So it's about 10% it's about of the entire population voted for him. 
and that gets you about 30% of the seats. And what I was saying about it mostly being protest votes, number two comes in as um, the Liberal Democrats. So this is hardly an amazing, the country has really spoken out in favor of Brexit here, because as you can see, almost, yeah, if you go on the basis that these are the most Brexit here people over here who really care about it, and these are the people who don't give a sh or, and these are the people who really hate Brexit, you can see that there really aren't that many people who are really in support of Brexit. Or if you want to look at it another way, this is the 17 or so million who voted for Brexit in the referendum, which is now reduced to this in the EU elections. Which brings us back to why did Nigel Farage desert UKIP in the first place? I mean, surely you can't just lay that at the feet of, of one person. You didn't get to meet Nigel Farage either, who's an absolute legend, by the way. He's, I, I, I'm going to admit, I fanboyed. One of its uh, MEP candidates have used, has used the N-word, other offensive language yeah, in, yeah, in, in it, videos. It, it, I have warned, and I wrote 10 days ago, that this direction was catastrophic. I think that if Tommy were to run, he's got the name. He's got the, the, the oomph behind him. He can do this. I think Tommy should do it. And obviously I'll completely support him on this. Is UKIP a racist party? Or at risk of becoming uh, I think that it's attracted certain individuals uh, that I would never have allowed to join UKIP. I, I, I'm going to admit, I fanboyed. Frankly, you know, we, w we won't even be discussing them after this election. Is it Supposedly about raping Labour MP Jess Phillips. It's, it's gone beyond a joke. Isn't it, it's, isn't it's it pretty disgusting it's that violent. this person is even allowed to it's, be it's, it's, putting himself up? It's extraordinary. You know, these comments are vile. I believe the brand has been now so damaged, so tarnished, uh, that it's not able to pick up. Uh, but frankly, uh, the sooner this election's over with and UKIP closes down, the better it will be. Very great reluctance I have, as of now, resign my membership of UKIP, cancel my standing order at the bank. I'm no longer a member of UKIP. You didn't get to meet Nigel Farage either, who's an absolute legend, by the way. He's... I, I, I'm going to admit, I fanboy. Now, I've got no doubt that Sargon's going to try and spin this to some great win. You know, like it was always his plan to end up at 3% in the polls. Yeah, maybe that's what we ought to call him from now. Sargon of 3%. Just 3%. I mean, just think about that. The man whose 20-year, five-dimensional chess plan was to appeal to 3% of the population. To save the West. <laughs> Wonder why people think that he's a fringe nutter. A man who goes on the campaign trail to debate anarchists. You know, because that's what real serious politicians do, right? And wonder why, why people just don't take him seriously. He did so well against those anarchists. Yeah, it's mostly because of people like Sargon of Akkad that Farage started the Brexit party. I mean, looking back, this was for me the tipping point is when all these guys were getting together because a feminist shot their girlfriend or something and they were like, yeah, let's all get together and have a stream about how funny this was. And I was like, actually, no, nah, guys, that's pretty messed up. In, in, in the case of that particular candidate, it's just outright abuse, you know, offensive abuse. Um, and there's no doubt they've gone in that direction. Frankly, you know, we, w we won't even be discussing them after this election. Is, is and they were like, oh, what are you, the Joe police? And he's like, nah, I'm just the guy who knows that's the sort of thing that's the kiss of death, the absolute kiss of death, if you want to be taken seriously. Hey, what do I know? I'm just some guy who makes videos on YouTube. Uh, well, you know what would really prove me wrong is if Sargon of Akkad were to take the leadership of UKIP to show just how much power a man with a YouTube channel can wield on the political stage.